you're changing direction in life. Well, what's causing you to feel like it's time to change direction in life? Is it a simple change? Is it changing your whole life? What is it? I'm Reverend Allie Bierman, and you are joining us here today for Let's Get Metaphysical, Connecting Heart and Mind. And we have the absolute best person as our guest today who knows all about change, Flora Brown. I have known Flora for very many years, and every so often she's into a new chapter in her life which is a good choice of words, because one of the things that she's done in that I first found her was she was an author and then she helped people write. And today she's here to share something that it's just really exciting. I think there's a very important place for it. And I'm really glad to introduce to you Flora Brown. If you'd like to share with us three things that most people don't know about you. <laughs> most people don't know that a lot of times I step forward to do things that I don't quite know how to do. And I'm willing to make a fool of myself in front of many people. <laughs> That's one thing. <laughs> Another one is most people look at me and think I'm organized and very neat and tidy and all that. That's not true. Um, and um, let me see, what's another thing? I can't swim. Wow. I I took swimming lessons when I was young because we had to swim at the Y and so forth, but I don't consider myself a competent swimmer. So a lot of people may not know that or, or care. <laughs> um, was that three things? That was definitely three things. It's so good to see you. I haven't seen you since the last time I went to California, and that was definitely fun. I love following you because every so often you're on a new path doing something completely different. And what you shared about jumping into doing things, that's like, Wow, because I think that you do an extraordinary job of everything you do. And I absolutely love what you're into now. Please share that with everybody because I think it's so important. Okay, uh, what I'm into now is helping people write their life stories because I think everybody's story matters. As a matter of fact, my Facebook group is called Your Life Story Matters. I think I got into this. Of course, you know, I've been writing all of my life and I've published some books um, traditionally and a, a lot of books uh, I've self-published. But one of the things I realized as the years have gone by is that I don't know a lot about my parents' backgrounds. Uh, my mother talked a lot about her life, but only the part she was proud of. <laughs> and if you got into areas that she didn't want you to know, she'd say, why do you need to know that? Uh, my father, I know very little other than where he was born and the names of his siblings accidentally because he talked about them in comparing us, his kids, to his siblings. So as I've gotten into helping people write their life stories, I also got into genealogy with um, a very good friend of mine now who I met online. And as I've learned more about genealogy and she also does uh, photo organization, I've realized more and more how it's important to capture the stories of your, if you can, your ancestors, your parents. But the story we have the most control over is our, our, our own stories. So I got very uh, com very passionate about doing that. And because I've been a teacher, I, I was a teacher for 40 years from junior high level to university level. I'm very competent about teaching. I'm very good at helping people bolster their confidence and take the chance of writing something or doing something. And most people do not feel that they're good writers. I doubt if you pick the best writer in the world, the top sellers, they probably have some confidence lagging when it comes to writing, and especially when you're talking about yourself. So I got into this 
I found a program or maybe the program found me called um, Guided Autobiography. And uh, for whatever reason, every January, I'm all excited. Everybody's always excited about the new year, making resolutions and so forth. And uh, one year I discovered this program in a catalog that was already ended, the classes had already ended. But when I saw that it was talking about um, helping people with their life stories, even though, you know, I have a lot of experience teaching, but this was a little different. So I thought I'll sign up for it, except it was over. So I had to contact the leader and she said, you know, I'll put you on the wait list and uh, let you know when the next training starts. So that's what I did that year. And um, each year, it seems like I reevaluate my life and see if I'm on the path I want to be on for that year or the next five years or whatever. And so I took the class and I got into a whole nother world of wonderful people who are dedicated to helping people write their life stories. And we're talking about people who are not necessarily planning to publish for the retail market. Many of the people are doing it as a personal project or to leave behind for their legacy, for their families. And many of them who are into genealogy, their stories are you know, full of um, documenting things that have happened, but also they're telling the emotional and other sides of the story. So I've just fallen in love with this. And especially because the whole population of people who don't think that they're writers don't know exactly where to go because if they go to a class about how to write a novel that's not what they want to do or they see a lot of programs about how to publish your book how to become a bestseller that's not what they're looking for either so i like what i do because you don't have to be a writer and the people who think that they're not writers tend to be <laughs> the ones that turn out to be the best because they don't come with this you know, lofty ideas and high expectations, and then they're shocked when they can turn out a story. So what I'm doing now, and I started off with six-week classes. I've moved more into shorter pieces because like everything, people's attention spans have gotten shorter. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now I'm interested in um, micro what I call micro-memoirs helping people write what I call one memory at a time. And the name of the program, the program that I was trained in, their their motto was um, two pages at a time. But I decided to switch it to memory because page count and word count doesn't matter if you are sharing a memory. And uh, if you can share one memory, it may be two pages. It may be a half a page. So with my own memoir right now, I'm writing... 52 micro memoirs. And each one of them is about, you know, whatever aspect of life from childhood through now that I want to talk about. And they those kind of things can be put in order later if you want to chronologically. But I think it's a big mistake for an amateur writer, especially to start off trying to write a chronological memoir or life story. So I have a technique to help them capture their memories and prompts to get them to writing and get them to see they can turn out much more than they can. And then they, you know, we could decide how they want to share it with their families. It can be in writing, you know, the typical manuscript. Uh, it can be an audio. It could also be what I recently created, uh, collaborated with uh, another a lady who's an expert in uh, digital storytelling, it can be a video with you telling a segment of your story. All of those things, your loved ones are going to be so happy to have when you create those, but we have to create those now <laughs> while we're alive and while we have the presence of mind and the access to our memories. Oh, I'm so grateful for everything that you just said. Because I've been thinking the last few years, my kids have no clue of my life, as I had no clue of my mom's life. When my son was eight years old for school, he interviewed her. That was the first time I learned 
my mom's mom died in childbirth. My mom didn't know she had siblings until she was six years old and was returned to her family. It's like, oh my gosh, that's such an important thing to do. And all the different ways you were saying it. And wow, I'm just glad to be here because it's like the impetus I need to actually get this thing written or videoed because I've done that for other people. Right. <laughs> you know, we're good at doing things for other people. And I'm the same way. Someone, you know, can ask me for help with something and boom, I jump on it and I get all these ideas and tell them things to do. And then to try to do those things myself, you know, it takes, <laughs> it's a different approach because, you have all of the other things going on in life. And we all have to fight that lack of confidence. And another big problem I have is overthinking. When I get ready to create something, I just overthink it. And even when I finish the rough draft or when I finish polishing it, now I'm overthinking it again about uh, how to get it out to the public or how to make the social media uh, videos, for example. That's helped me a lot, however, with uh, watching especially what younger people do and other artists do, other creators. It has given me a lot of um, permission to myself to just get on the microphone and do something. Say what you're going to say. Don't spend hours trying to polish a talk. <laughs> you're not about to give a you know a State of the Union address. You you're you're sharing something personal. So I've learned a lot from watching younger people make their social media videos, and so my kids and some of my friends are surprised to find out that I have a TikTok account, I have an Instagram account, I make Facebook uh, you know the same videos you can post on Facebook, and I have a um, YouTube account that's really um, needs to be revived. So I jump in there and do things like I say. Sometimes, I, I mean, most times I don't know what I'm doing with social media because it's changing, changing, changing. And as soon as I think I have figured out how to do it, uh, I go in there and the buttons have moved to a different place. They have new features. Every time I open anything and it says, we have great new features, they think that they have done us a favor. They have not done me a favor because <laughs> I think, oh my God, I come from a generation where you learned how to operate your stove in the kitchen and it worked the same way all of your life. You learned how to operate your radio. When you got a t television, you learned how to operate that. You learned how to drive a car, even a stick shift, but it stayed the same. It didn't change. You didn't have to learn some new skills to drive that car the next week, the next year. Um, but now we're in a different age with the social media and it's changing constantly. They're improving, they think it and offering features. So every time you go to make a video and perhaps you, I don't know if you do social media videos, but you can bet that there's some new way to do something that you don't know how to do. And you end up pushing buttons and sometimes you push one and now it's published and now you got, oh, how do I unpublish that thing? <laughs> so yeah, it's a different day. So we have to adapt as all generations have had to adapt. And as you get older, it's harder because you want to just, I know you're a writer and you're a performer, you're a singer and all those things. You want to do your craft. You don't want to think about all the technology. That's why people who are, let's say singers, somebody else goes out there and sets up the mic, the sound system, somebody else designs their outfits it's all of that stuff they can focus on the singing the craft and unfortunately when you are a solopreneur an entrepreneur a small business owner you have to do all those things <laughs> and it's it's daunting but i jump in there and do it anyway and uh, sometimes i amaze myself sometimes i go i can't believe you did that but I <laughs> keep going. <laughs> well, I can believe you do because you do everything so well. And I would never know that you were jumping in. With, I just jump into things and I just let the universe guide me and I don't perfect it. 
So, like, I was watching this info on Mr. Beast. I've had a YouTube channel since 2007, so I have well over a thousand videos. And it's talking about how he gets a million views and everything because he has a whole staff and they're perfecting everything. You know what? I'm not going to perfect everything. I couldn't, I wouldn't spend the time and energy to do that. And it's just, I'm just so grateful to be listening to you. I only do YouTube and, and Zoom because I can then share it and all this. I wouldn't have any idea how to go into the other <laughs> social media and do it. And I don't have an interest in doing it either. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing, if you do want to do those things, <clears throat> excuse me, my way of doing anything is to try to learn from somebody who's already doing it and offering classes and so forth. But eventually I throw my hands up and say, okay, that's enough training. That's enough listening to other people's instructions. I'm just going to jump and do it because there's a point at which you're never going to get to that point where you think you have it perfectly ready to go. And like you say about, the, you said Mr. Beast, yeah. they're trying to perfect something. I think these days trying to perfect things is um, a mistake because people are more interested in the authentic you where you know how you how you got to wherever you are and what is it that you've learned that can help them and they are much more forgiving than my <laughs> the people that were sometimes i think about when we were when i was a kid and we were being raised by very strict adults if you had a a five line uh, easter speech to give at your church on Easter Sunday. We re we rehearsed that thing, you know, up and down and crisscross. And if you made a mistake, it was it was just so humiliating because we were expected to do it perfectly. And I think that's a big mistake to try to do these days because people, and, and I'm sure you can agree, if you're listening to somebody and they are talking from the heart rather than from a script, then you can tell the difference and you are much more likely to enjoy it. You're more, more likely to learn from it. And certainly you're more likely to trust that person to be able to help you if you choose to get help from them. Then you are somebody who's perfectly polished because polish can easily wear off and fall apart. And uh, there you standing, you know, <laughs> naked, as, you know, symbolically naked with just you and your ideas and the audience. And uh, you can deliver very well under those circumstances. I'm not saying it's not good to make some notes and think about what you're going to say, but sometimes when it comes out, if you're being authentic, it comes out a little differently than what you planned. So I appreciate that the younger generation are so spontaneous and, um, that's why they seem so assured of themselves. I ask my uh, youngest daughter sometimes how to do this and how to do that. She goes, Mom, just start pushing the buttons and figure it out. She resists trying to tell me how to do things because at, at the, you know, after all is said and done, that's what you're going to have to do is push some buttons, <laughs> see what works, <laughs> and hopefully know how to delete if you haven't already published. <laughs> <laughs> But that's, gosh, I, I wish I had known about this many years ago. I was writing an autobiography for a dear, very dear friend, and we recorded everything. And I spent a whole weekend going through all the, they were all audio recordings, renaming them so I'd know how to put them into the book. I renamed them by the topic and ignored the chronology. Okay. And I couldn't figure out the chronology and I never wrote the book for him. And it's like, Aww. oh, this is, um, I don't ever want that to happen again. So I'm listening, yep. paying attention to everything that you're sharing. Yeah, the, the chronology, you know, obviously when you were writing for someone else, only that person knows the chronology. But even when you're writing for yourself, I don't know that the chronology matters in the, big picture it matters when you're telling the story a, a one story a one memory but those can stand alone 
I don't see, you know, there's a trend now where many people are doing what they call micro um, memoirs, flash fiction, flash memoirs, where they're just focusing on a series of things that are not in chronological order. I think it's more important for the reader, whether it's your family or a reader who's purchased a book, it's more important for them to get the essence of your story you know, how did you feel? What did you learn from it? And so forth, than to have everything in perfect order from birth to death, you know, type thing. That's my view. And I I think it's probably why I hesitated to write my own um, memoir long ago, because that's how most people would advise you to make an outline, start with, you know, first grade, second grade, whatever, and that's just not the way most memory works. <laughs> you can force it, but I I prefer to do these spontaneous memories. And so now I have um, a hub. I call it a hub. It is a hub where I, uh, what is it? It was created by productivity people. Notion, I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, it's a place where you can put, you remember Evernote? A program called Evernote. Well, you use it. <laughs> okay. Um, th this one is similar. I never mastered Evernote. Notion, I haven't mastered either, but I do use the aspect of it where when I come up with an idea, a memory of, from my past, I, I can go over there and type in a few words about, <clears throat> excuse me, the memory, and then leave it and go on with my business. And when I get ready to go back, I can retrieve that short memory and expand that story because I have if you have the trigger for the story you'll remember the rest of the story but if you it's like anything else you know you remember something for a moment if you don't quickly write it down it's gone and it may come back but uh, that's the way I do right now with my micro memoirs so I have a bunch of them that I have not fully flushed out and written, but I know what the essence of the situation was. And little by little, I'm getting those done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Boy, did I need to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I put all these notes on little, um, each one's its own note. Then I have to remember, where did I put that? <laughs> yeah, that is a big problem. And some people seem to be um, intuitively organized and some people are not. I used to be a lot more organized than I am now, but digital organization is another animal from mm -hmm. paper organization. You can still do paper organization. Digital organization is wonderful and amazing if you know how to do it, if you learn how to do it, and you master the idea of naming and placing things. That's it's what it's all about. And I've looked at people who really know what they're doing and I'm just amazed at how they can retrieve information because they have organized it. If you haven't organized it, you're going to have trouble retrieving it because it's going to be like you're trying to put your friend's book together without having identified those times, those time frames in the sequence. You can't know what what goes where. So you have to have a system like that if, if organization or if having things chronological is important, then you do have to have some kind of system. Um, the other thing you can do, of course, is backtrack in time. And what, that's what I do with my stories. The ones I'm writing, sometimes I will you know, have to backtrack. What, okay, what year was that? Or how old was I? So that must have been that year. And if that's important, it's not necessarily always important to the story, but details do help paint the picture. And I was writing about the other day, my experiences in, as a teenager growing up in my church in St. Louis, Missouri, when they started a youth group and how I joined the youth group and uh, how wonderful it was to be in this group because our parents, the girls' parents, were not very um, liberal when it came to us going to parties and being with boys. <laughs> but this youth group leaders who took over, they would host parties and things for us because they understood kids wanted to get together and socialize. 
So we had a lot of fun in those years. But I was writing about one incident, and I was trying to remember what year and make of car these leaders had, because those of us who didn't own cars, our families didn't own cars, they would haul us into their car and pack us in there and take us home at the end of the evening. And I was, it was just bothering what kind of car did they have? So fortunately, I still have a few friends my age from that era who are alive. <laughs> and that's another thing that happens as you get older. You can't always retrieve this information from other people either if they're no longer alive or they are having mental decline or something. So I quickly texted one of my friends who's in Georgia. <laughs> It probably would seem like any like a random question to anyone else, but I said, "Hey, do you remember what make and model the Coles car was when we were in the youth group in St. Louis?" And we're talking decades ago, right? And it's funny because he texted back immediately. You know, he said, "I think that was a 1956 Chevrolet." Blah blah blah, and he was giving me a little detail, but. Uh, it you know I don't know how significant that detail is, but it bothered me that I couldn't remember, and fortunately I could you know of course our leaders are are all past, and uh, many of those students are past, but uh, <laughs> it was it's interesting how you can find that information some way shape or form if it's important to you, and at the end you may end up not even using it in the finished product, but you have it. Good. I want to be sure people know where to find you. Okay. Let's see. The best place to find me is probably my website. Maybe not the best, but it's easy. FloraBrown.com. That's easy. <laughs> That's my website. If you know my name, you know my website. Um, when I'm up to date and keeping things current, <laughs> as soon as you go to my website, whatever is at the top should be something that's current uh, that I'm doing. However, I do have it organized by free resources so they can see which things they can download free. I have a free quiz you can take to see where uh, where you need help with writing your life story and things of that nature. In addition to that, I also have a um, Instagram account. And uh, but when you go to my website, of course, you're going to get all that information will be there too. I have uh, in my Instagram, I use my name, Flora Brown, except I have to add something because there are a zillion Flora Browns I discovered. So I just add Flora Brown to you, the number two and the letter U. And I use that same handle on TikTok. So, um, and then over on, on Facebook, when you go to my, my profile, let's see, what did I do for my profile? I guess that's where you start over there with uh, Facebook. I think it's this floor in brown. It's my profile. But I will be I'm gonna send you information that you can verify to put this on your okay your contact. But yeah, starting with the website is good because everything should sort of kind of be there and somewhere you have to find it. You know, usually the social media things are at the bottom, but there are also the links at the top. You can click on my blog because I have a blog there. You can join my um newsletter, and all of these things are on my website. So I encourage people to jump over and learn about what I'm doing. I'm pretty harmless. I don't bite often. And mm -hmm. so I will, <laughs> I'm more than happy to point people to what can help them, whether they take my class or not, because sometimes people will want something that I don't offer or that I'm not offering right now or that I think someone is better at sharing with them than I am. So I'm very much a teacher and a mom. So I want to get people to the right place. So I encourage people to contact me even just for information. If you know they don't have to worry that I'm going to try to pressure them into taking one of my classes. <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much for being you because you're an extraordinary person making thank a you. difference in so many lives. And I want everybody to take a screenshot so they see all your books. Oh, <laughs> yep, you can see it. Uh, um, I've learned from experience, not because I thought of it myself, that if you have books or something to promote, you need to let people know about it because people cannot buy a book they don't know exists. 
and they certainly can't take a class they don't know exists. So I found during the Zoom years, once we started with the um, pandemic and we were doing so much online, that it was probably smart to just have my books <laughs> behind me. I don't there all of them aren't back there, but some of the key ones. And that helps people to know what I'm doing and they can ask questions about it and gives me a chance to promote something. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And all You're of welcome. the links will be in the show notes. You know that suffering is optional. So if you need some better sleep, if you're just kind of feeling down sometimes, feeling crummy, want to improve your athletic performance, anything going on in your life, what if you're in pain and you don't want to do drugs and any other drugs aren't working? I got something for you. Check in the show notes and struggle.com. Audible has something special for you. When you click my link, you get 30 days free trial. Go in, download the audiobook of your choice, and spend 30 days discovering all the cool stuff in there that you know what? You won't find it anyplace else. And this month, I recommend Sand Talk. It's one of the most powerful books on how our world gets to be in the state it has and over time and civilizations and cultures how everything goes in cycles why they do and i just thought it was an incredible work recommending it to you you can join our facebook group got any questions that's a place to ask them place to make a new friend place to pick up the extras that i put in to help guide you toward your spiritual journey. It's yours. It's not mine. It's not Bob's. It's yours. Ask your questions there. You can go to our show page where you can listen to or watch any episode. You can also leave a review very, very easily there. You know what happens when you leave a review? People who are on their spiritual path, on their journey, don't know where to go. They'll find your review. They'll find, well, what did you like about this show? And then they'll take a look. And if your review's not there, they won't get to see it. So I appreciate you doing that. I appreciate you joining our community. And when you join our community, you're supporting the show. And you get to join me every month for a live video where we can interact talk about whatever you really want to talk about. Remember to enjoy, that's capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment, because nothing in your life, nothing you see, hear, taste, touch, smell, happens outside of you. All happens within, and I look forward to seeing you here next time.